Shanti, how can we use uh, meditation to in increase our mindfulness and awareness? Yes. We are part of Supreme Consciousness in this chart. Supreme Consciousness is omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient and it reflects within us. The world is projection of our own being. We are the subject and the world is the object. If we focus on the subject or our higher self, then we will be free from the problems. We get involved in focus on the objects in the world. We give them priority. We lose the center. Vipassana is the meditation technique. I want to explain. In this book, I have explained Vipassana techniques and also mindfulness. What is Vipassana? V, Pasya. V means turn around and Pasya means to see. Turn around and look at yourself. What it means is look at yourself as consciousness or Atman which is a subject. We are occupied looking outside. We look outside by interacting with our five senses and the mind. And this disturbs us. So Vipassana is looking within. We exist as a physical body. We exist as energy or as sense organs and also we exist as mind. So Vipassana could be practiced at gross level. Gross level Vipassana is practice, that is means focusing on yourself. So anything you do physically, walking, eating, exercising, walking on the beach, whatever you do, you do with awareness that is meditation with our gross body. I have written about mindfulness in walking and eating as an example. So doing it slowly during active day, we can practice physical vipassana. Other one is the breath. Breath is the constant source. We can focus on any object, everything is changing. Something that is constant is our breath. If we focus on our breath, not doing breathing practice or controlling the breath, simply observing the breath as is, as a witness. If we observe the breath as a witness, passive witness, without judgment, it will connect you with the mind and consciousness. And connecting with consciousness will take you inward. So that is the approach which is subtler than using the body. Still subtler approach is thoughts. Thoughts come to mind. All the thoughts come connecting with the world. Then come back. Go out and come back. So if we, if we focus on the subject that is Atman, it's the starting point of all the thoughts because from Atman comes consciousness and mind and mind projects as thoughts. So if we focus on the center that no matter wherever the thoughts go, go ultimately comes back to this anchor, this becomes practice. So at gross level, subtle level and in between. So I explain that technique of breath in this book. We will apply that track technique. So you can try right now. I will give you in short because it requires longer time. This is in a capsule form so you understand. First prepare with yoga positions, yogic breathing and find a comfortable position. Then close the eyes, relax the body. 
simply observe the breath. Breathing goes on itself. We are not conscious when we are sleeping, we are working, breathing goes on. Here only thing we do is be aware as a passive witness, as an outsider. So only awareness, breath goes on, breathing goes on. If it is shallow, it is deep, it is this or that, whatever it is, you observe, don't control, don't think about it. Any thought comes to your mind, ignore them. Thoughts get encouragement by trying to resist them. Ignore the thoughts, return back to the breath. Travel in with the breath as breath goes inward. Feel the journey from nostrils going inward into the lungs and ultimately to the heart center where Atman is. Outgoing breath, feel the breath going out of nostrils in the space. If you continue observing passively, your breathing will become slower, quieter, smoother and rhythmic. Breath and mind are very closely connected. The status of breath will determine the status of the mind. Status of mind determines the status of breath. By changing the status of breath, we can change the condition of the mind. Breath becomes quieter and rhythmic. Your mind also becomes quiet. When mind becomes quiet, it goes to the source. It goes to the source which is consciousness. This is what is meditation about. Quieting the mind and going to the source. So when you continue watching the breath, breath goes out, you ride the breath, you go out with the breath. Breath goes in, you travel in with the breath. So you become consciousness that is travels in and travels out. When it travels in, you identify yourself existing in the body. When it travels out, you identify existing independent of the body. This way, you can learn to separate yourself from the body. Then, you observe the observer of the breath. Instead of riding the breath, stay apart from it and observe the breath that is flowing in and flowing out. This way you train yourself to be a third person. You can apply this technique anytime during the day. While driving, riding a bus or plane, you have to do nothing, nobody, no one would notice what you are doing. You don't even have to close your eyes. This can be applied any time during the day. During the day, when you are talking to someone, you become as an outsider. You talk as if you are outsider using this body and speech. Somebody tells you something, you become a third person observing the conversation. You experience the emotional things that happen. So you don't become victim of all the emotions. You become an observer of the emotions. You become visionary. You have panoramic view. You act constructively instead of impulsively. This is the problem today. Because of all the distractions, People have become impulsive. This impulsive activity is seen in individual life, in the family life, in the politics. Politicians are impulsive. 
So their being impulsive can hurt entire country. It can hurt entire universe. We are in that stage of our evolution that our evolution is working against us. Our evolution has given us comforts. But all the comforts don't earn us time, energy, money, peace of mind. People still complain, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough energy. I don't have money. Matter of fact, all the comforts have thickened the mind. One has lost the capacity to think clearly, to judge, rely on oneself. We are mesmerized by politicians and news media. We are constantly bombarded. This bombardment is so predominant that we think we are thinking and judging for ourselves, but we are actually speaking with our conditioned mind that we believe. For example, some product is advertised. Take example for anything. They put a beautiful woman selling the toothpaste or a soap or shampoo or conditioner. They bombard you. So you don't think you are hypnotized, but with constant bombardment, certain brand of shampoo, certain brand of toothpaste or soap. You go out and you start to choose, that thing pops up and you think you chose it, but it was chosen for us. This is hypnotic state. Only way we can remove it is by removing the deep conditioning with a deep relaxation self-hypnosis and using affirmations. Affirmations that goes deep. Conscious mind is bombarded constantly. Then it becomes numb. And all the thoughts bypass the conscious mind and goes to subconscious mind that influences us. This is why mantra chanting we do is constant repetition. Constant repetition takes you in the state that is more like pre-hypnotic state, you go deep inside. So, deep relaxation and preparation, you use the affirmation, it goes so deep, so it reprograms the brain and makes all the brain connection, neuron connection, opens up new channels, so we can change our life through this practice. So Vipassana is looking within. This I explained only at practical manner. Real practice we will discuss next time.